So in this video, I'm going to answer a question relating to not having a thyroid. Someone wanted to know my opinion on if there's any long-term complications, etc. First thing I want to say is that I'm not giving you medical advice. This is not going to bypass your, uh, what you're already taking now. Check with your doctor before implementing any of this. And this is just for your own research, okay? Now, over the years, I've had quite a few people come into my office uh, after having a thyroidectomy, and they did just fine. So out of all the things that could happen to a person and all the potential organs that you can have removed, I think um, having the thyroid out and being on a certain hormone protocol, you could do quite fine, okay? So the thyroid is ultimately controlled by the hypothalamus in the brain. It's a very small structure. It makes a hormone called thyroid-releasing hormone. And this gland tells this gland, the pituitary, to release thyroid-stimulating hormone. And then that message goes down to the thyroid and causes the thyroid to produce and release T4 and a little bit of T3, okay? Now, T4 is an inactive thyroid hormone. T3 is the active version. And what happens is for this to work, it has to be converted into T3. So it actually works through several um, organs, two being the liver and the kidneys. 80% of the T4 is converted to the liver, 20% is converted through the kidney to make T3. And then T3 goes into all the cells and affects metabolism and many other things. And once it's done its job, there's a signal that's sent back to the pituitary and the hypothalamus, turning these off, okay? So you have a feedback loop. Now, when a person has their thyroid removed, there are three points that I think we should emphasize. One is you also have something called a parathyroid gland that's right next to the thyroid. And you wanna make sure that they don't take those out as well, okay? So you want these left intact because the parathyroid gland controls calcium and many other things, but they're, they're very important glands. There's four of them, okay? That's one. The second point I wanna bring up is something called calcitonin. Very few people are talking about calcitonin. There's not a, a strong emphasis on this hormone. And because what happens is once you have the thyroid removed, typically you're put on a synthetic T4 like Synthroid, which doesn't have this in there, okay? So the question is, where are you getting this from? Well, let's talk about what it does. It inhibits osteoclasts. What does that mean? Well, osteoclasts break down bone, okay? So this hormone slows down that process. So it actually helps osteoporosis or prevents it. And there's even a therapy called salmon calcitonin used for postmenopausal osteoporosis, okay? Interesting. And also, uh, it's used for spinal stenosis, which is basically the space around the spinal column is smaller because there's a calcium buildup. So apparently, calcitonin uh, helps this condition right here. So my question is, where are you getting this, okay? And are, you, are they leaving the parathyroids? Now, one way to get this is by taking a complete thyroid extract complex, which is it's called Armour Thyroid. You can check with your doctor on this. A lot of doctors don't like to use it because it's hard to regulate. They like to use just the T4. But I think it's very important to bring this up to your doctor and also ask the big question, where am I getting my calcitonin, okay? Because when you're taking a synthetic version of T4, you're not getting calcitonin. So that being said, once this gland is removed and you're on your hormones, okay, and everything's being adjusted, I don't think there's anything that you should do that's special or different other than getting on your healthy keto and intermittent fasting. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.